Hello, and welcome to I Wish I Knew More About. In this series, we take a look at things I know a little about, but wish I knew a little bit more about. In music. In this episode, we're looking at pitch percussion. Every kind there is, where it's from, what it's made of, how it sounds, and if it will cure my depression. Nope. Since the beginning of time, all sorts of animals have slapped things for fun and self-expression. That could be a rock, a log, or a bag of carrots with a cactus leaf 15 times. We started to develop rhythm and slap things together, like closeted gay dudes in every furry comic I've ever read. From there, we probably figured out that different types of things sound different when they're slapped, and that was the beginning of the concept of pitch percussion. I let you drum on my penis. These instruments generally have a lot of cultural significance and are in many cases ancient. That doesn't mean that they don't work in modern composition though. Many of these instruments work incredibly well for techno, house, down-tempo, soundtrack work, and a whole other slew of modern applications. While researching this video, I discovered that there was a classification system for musical instruments based on their physical properties called the Hornbostel Sax System. This system breaks percussion down into a few main categories, which I will now read to you from Wikipedia. 111.1, concussion idiophones, AKA clappers, played in pairs and beaten against each other. 111.2, percussion idiophones. This includes most percussive instruments played by hand or with a percussion mallet, including the hang, gongs, xylophones, but not drums, and some cymbals. 2-1, struck membranophones, including most types of drums, such as the timpani, snare, and tom-tom. No, no, that's the tom-tom club. Th there we go, thank you. 412.12, percussion reeds. None of these are pitched, so we do not care. The wiki page that I just read this to you from contradicts the wiki page with a list of pitched percussion, and I already put days of work into collecting media for this, so here are the other ones we'll be including in this video. Section 3-1, simple chordophones or zithers, including the hammer dulcimer and its cousins. The Hornbostel sax system is fascinating, and I recommend you check it out if you're interested in exotic or hard to find musical instruments. I'm also not gonna be saying Hornbostel sax again because my mouth hurts, so we'll call it the horn suck system from now on. We'll be organizing this video by a horn suck category, starting with lithophones and ending with chordophones. I'll tell you a little bit about each one and give you some examples. Some of those examples are gonna come from Native Instruments Contact and UVI Instruments, and some come from YouTube. I will list all my sources in the video description and patrons will get the audio samples from this video. With all that out of the way, we're ready to go. Let's dive in and learn more about pitched percussion. First up, we have lithophones. These ancient instruments are made of rock, which when struck produce musical notes. Rock gongs and stone marimbas fall into this category, the latter of which you're hearing now. A uh, fun fact, the rocks could either be placed naturally by nature or placed by humans, which means anything could be a lithophone if you're not a baby about it. Next up is the chime bar. This falls under the horn suck system designation 111.22, or individual percussion plaques. They were designed in the United States in the 20th century and sound similar to a glockenspiel, but with much more sustain. Under the same designation is the bianchong, an ancient Chinese instrument made of bronze bells, each producing a distinct tone. The demo that you're hearing right now is from the Sound Magic bianchong instrument. Another related instrument are song bells, which also originated in ancient China and are essentially a cross between the vibraphone, glockenspiel, and celesta. Uh, don't worry, we'll get to all those soon, you little muffin. This is a crystallophone, a family of instruments including the glass harmonica, singing glasses, and more. They use glass bars or tubes to produce musical tones through vibrations and date back to France in the 18th century. Next up is the talonphone, and oh my god, it's time for gamelan! It's time for gamelan! We're gonna put all the gamelan instruments together because there are a lot of them. So what's going on here? Well, when it comes to pitch percussion, Indonesia has it on lock. That's because of gamelan, the traditional ensemble music of the Javanese, Sudanese, and Balinese people of Indonesia. A gamelan orchestra is made of percussive elements, most commonly metallophones played with mallets, hand drums called kandang, xylophones, bamboo flutes, a bowed string instrument called the rabab, and a zither-like instrument called the sitar. Here are all the pitched percussion instruments I found that belong to the gamelan orchestra. The talampong. Talampong is a traditional music instrument of the Manakabau people of Western Sumatra, Indonesia. The talampong produce a static texture consisting of interlocking rhythms. Gender. 
It consists of 10 to 14 tuned metal bars suspended over a tuned resonator of bamboo or metal, which are tapped with a mallet made of wooden discs in Bali or a padded wooden disc in Java. Sauron, this normally has seven bronze bars placed over the top of a resonating frame. It is usually about 20 centimeters high and played on the floor by a seated performer. This provides the core melody or balongan in the gamelan orchestra. Slentham, part of the gender family, as it's also known as the gender panambong, a metallophone with metal bars suspended over bamboo resonators. It generally plays the most basic form of the melody in a composition. Ankhlungs are made of a varying number of bamboo tubes attached to a bamboo frame. The tubes are carved to have a resonant pitch when struck and tuned to octaves similar to Western handbells. Kaolong, a bamboo xylophone. Kaolong is actually the name for the Diasporus macrophylla tree in Sudanese language. Kemenak is a banana-shaped slit drum made of bronze. It is struck with a padded stick and then allowed to resonate. It has a specific pitch which can be varied by covering the slit, but it is not matched to other instruments of the gamelan. Bonong, a collection of small gongs, sometimes called kettles or pots, placed horizontally onto strings in a wooden frame. All the kettles have a central boss, but around it, the lower-pitched ones have a flattened head, while the higher ones have an arched one. Each is tuned to a specific pitch in the appropriate scale. Kenong, it's more gongs, baby! Yeah! Gongs! According to my notes, that's all the pitch percussion used in the gamelan orchestra. Sorry for my pronunciations. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Let's get back to the list. Next up are four metallophones from Thailand I'm going to lump together. They are the Ranat A, Ranat A Lek, Ranat Tum, and the Ranat Tum Lek. These are traditional Thai instruments that all resemble a xylophone. They have a series of wooden bars suspended by cords over a boat-shaped resonator, and they are struck by mallets. They are used in a traditional Thai pifat ensemble. The Rana Ek Lek is similar to the Rana Ek, but smaller, and the Rana Tum is similar to the Rana Tum Ek, but larger. This is the Taxala Parda, a traditional folk instrument from the Basque country. It can be made of wood or stone, and is traditionally played by two people. In some regions of the Basque country, the name means racket, while in others it has been said to mean the trot of the horse. It's been used as a communication device for funerals, celebrations, and the making of booze. I'm spending more time on this than others on this list because this shit goes hard as fuck. Seriously, look at this. Still in the same family as the other lithophones, we have the Silex piano. This is a percussion instrument apparently invented by Honoré Bold around 1885, but I couldn't find anything but this one picture and then this thing. What, what the fuck is this? This is not the same as this. This looks like something Lady Gaga would play, and this looks like a dude tied a bunch of yams together and hit them with hammers. That seems like something Lady Gaga would play too. Ah, the Celesta. This is one of my favorite pitch percussion sounds. It was invented in France in 1886 by Augusto Musto, and this is a keyboard instrument with metal bars struck by hammers. It kind of sounds like a bell, but since you can play it like a piano, it generally gets different parts written for it, and I think it's beautiful. Speaking of bells, here's the bell plate. This originated in ancient Asia, but became popular in theater music in the 20th century United States. It consists of a flat and fairly thick sheet of metal, producing a sound similar to a bell. Next up is the Lujon. I couldn't find anyone really playing one of these on YouTube or contact instrument that had one, but here are a few seconds of this absolute banger by Henry Mancini so you can hear it. Seriously, go check out this track. It's so lush. I passed out and woke up in a fursuit on ketamine. It's a bass metallophone consisting of individually pitched metal plates that are attached to the resonance chambers of a partition wooden box. It can be approximated using a bass marimba, but fuck that. We want the real thing. Give us the Lujon. This one's probably familiar to most of you. The vibraphone. It was invented by Herman Winterhoff of the Leedy Manufacturing Company after he spent a few years experimenting with the Vox Humana effect on a three-octave steel marimba. A Vox Humana is a setting on a pipe organ that is said to mimic the human voice using pipes. He added a small motor for vibrato, and the instrument was dubbed the vibraphone and sold starting in 1924. It was originally marketed as a novelty instrument for vaudeville orchestras, but quickly became hugely popular in jazz, and I love the sound. The hand chime is not a vibraphone and seems to be exclusively played by children. I don't know, it's weird. Every single video I looked up for this has kids or teachers of kids playing it. 
It was invented by Larry and Iris Dickskin. It's Dickens. That's what I said. And it's similar to handbells, but with a mechanism to dampen the sound. Next up is the tubular bell, which confusingly is also known as chimes. I usually think of chimes as higher pitch, but Wikipedia says they're called chimes, so whatever. You've definitely heard these before, either in classical pieces or this absolute banger by Mike Oldfield, named after the instrument. This is the Semantron. It was invented before you were born by Eastern Orthodox Christian monasteries. Whenever monks heard the Semantron knocking, they would run to the church. Nothing got an old monk excited like the sound of the Semantron. What? What? It's called the Semitron? Do you want to do another take? No? Okay. Sounds good. This beautiful bean is the Aztec Teponastli. It's considered a slit drum, which is a class of percussion that isn't actually a drum because it doesn't have a drum head. The slit is used to create one or more tongues, and tongues of different areas or thickness will produce different pitches. You'll find slit drums in a lot of cultures from Africa to Southeast Asia and Oceania. Okay, here's one that I've actually wanted for a while. This is the hand pan. Its predecessor is called the Hang, and it was invented by Felix Roher and Sabrina Scherer in Bern, Switzerland. They have a company called Panart Handball AG. You could call it a hang drum, but then if you do, Felix and Sabrina show up at your house and shoot you in the knees. It's part of a family of instruments related to the Caribbean steel pan or steel drum, which is traditionally made from repurposed oil barrels. A company called Lumen makes an electroacoustic hand pan I desperately want. So if anyone wants to send me one, that would be great. Thanks. We are currently in the section of the horn suck system designated for percussion vessels, specifically gongs. Gongs are super ubiquitous instrument throughout all of ancient and modern history and come in a dizzying variety. You know gongs. I know you know gongs. You know gongs and you love gongs. Gongs. This is a kulintang. It's a traditional Filipino instrument made of a set of gongs arranged in a row and played with mallets. These are singing bowls. They're ancient Tibetan resting bells with an open upward face. They produce a harmonic sound when rubbed with a mallet and are used for meditation and relaxation. And they, and, wait, no, no. Don't, what are you doing? No, don't, don't do that. Carillons are a set of large tune bells from medieval Europe. You'll hear them used in churches in tons of European cities. This is the Scrabble. It's a Lithuanian folk instrument consisting of wooden bells, and I would very much like to have one in my house. Hey, it's a flexitone. It's, it's flexitone time, everybody. Everybody loves a flexitone. Get a flexitone. Buy a flexitone for your friend. Run a flexitone through pitch map and conform it to a series of pitches. Then run it through Arteria's Gradiner thing. Wow, what a flexitone. These next three plucked idiophones or lamellophones, I'm gonna lump together. They're all traditional African instruments and they all work by plucking to create a pitch via vibration. They're the kasanji, the akembe, and the mabira. You might be saying, hey Jeremy, Aren't those just called thumb pianos or kalimbas? And I would say, yes, they are. You bright little pistachio. What a smart little nut you are. Boom whacker. This thing sounds like it's just ready for a four on the floor kick drum. Honestly, the boom whacker kicks ass. According to the wiki, boom whackers are hollow color-coded tubes tuned to musical pitches, often used for team building and music education. What, team building? No, don't do that. I don't want to team build again. Stop, I don't want a team build. You probably think of xylophones as these, but in truth, xylophones have been around in far greater forms for hundreds and hundreds of years. The actual xylophone is defined as a percussion instrument with wooden bars, typically played with mallets. The modern Western xylophone has metal bars, I think. Actually, I don't know. Let me look. Oh, it doesn't. What the hell am I thinking? Do I, is it? Am I thinking about a glockenspiel? Glockenspiels were invented in the 18th century Germany and are made up of tuned metal bars played with mallets. You could try playing one with other stuff, but the glockenspiel police will show up at your door and shoot you in the knees. This is the marimba. The marimba is a type of wooden xylophone with resonators under each bar. It was invented in Central America and it is old. It's been used in a ton of different types of music, and is always a great choice for a pitched percussion instrument in a modern electronic track. Now for the weirdest and most mysterious thing on this list, the quadrangularis reversum. 
This is one of the many experimental instruments created by artist Harry Patch, and it consists of a diamond marimba made of 36 African Potawak blocks and 10 20 alto register blocks with bamboo resonators under each block. I couldn't find any performances with this instrument, but I did find the wiki page for instruments by Harry Patch, and it absolutely fucks. You should definitely go check it out. The Xylo Rimba exists, and I'm not going to bother even looking up more about it. It exists. That's all you need to know. The Balafon is a traditional African instrument. It's wooden xylophone with gourd resonators, and it sounds really good. I would choose this for a techno or down tempo track as well. Falling under the category of instruments like the juice harp, the ancient Chinese klaxon is absolutely wild. This little fella is the marimbula, or bass kalimba. Say hi to the little guy. Look at him go. Looks like a Pokemon waiting to happen. Daxophone. It's the daxophone time. Daxophone your life. You've tried other phones, but they're nothing compares. It's time for daxophone. Daxophone time. <laughs> Musical saws are absolutely wild. I wonder if this video of Wintergarten playing one will get uh, this video claimed. Uh, if it's in the video, it didn't. Uh, let me know in the comments, I guess. Um, also, go watch Wintergarten. He's pretty cool. The glass harp is a friction idiophone. Uh, I don't know why I didn't include this in the section about crystallophones. It absolutely belongs there. You're probably thinking this video is sponsored by Big Crystallophone, right? Wrong. It's not sponsored at all. Support me on Patreon.com Red Beans Recording if you'd like to see more content like this. Um, friction drums exist. Uh, this is a friction drum. What are you doing, step bro? Gudu gudu. It's gudu gudu time. This ancient Nigerian membranophone is known as the father of all drums. I'm just realizing, is it membranophone or membranophone? Membranophone. 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 It's membranophone. The timpani comes from 17th century Italy and is also known as a kettle drum. I always felt like these would be really fun to play. I'm going to lump these next three together. Uh, the tom-tom is a membranophone. Wait. Membranophone. Okay, yeah. The tom-tom is a membranophone in which the one end without a membrane is open as opposed to sealed. There are a lot of different variations here, but for pitch versions, we have the rototom and the octobon. Rototoms make great fill toms in a lot of different types of music. Do not sleep on them. The tabla and the tabla tarong fall under the category of percussion, which produces their sounds using the vibration of a tightly stretched membrane. This group includes all drums and kazoos. A tabla is a kazoo. Let's go ahead and add the dolak and the mirdangam to this part of the video. They are both two-headed drums struck by hand. I'm also going to be adding the santer here because I did a bunch of recordings of it with this group of instruments. Uh, it is actually under the classification of like hammer dulcimers or zither. With the tabla, they are part of the classical and contemporary Indian music ensemble. The Japanese otsuzumi and tsuzumi are considered instruments in which the body is conical shaped, which is a wild and amazing definition. They're used in traditional Japanese theater. This is the Junko, otherwise known as the Junko, otherwise known as the Junko. It is a traditional Korean instrument used in Samulnori. Oh my god, how do you say that? Samulnori. It's used in traditional Samulnori ensembles in Korea. A Samulnori ensemble consists of four main instruments, each representing an element of nature. This here is a talking drum, which is a category of drums from West Africa. It's an hourglass shaped drum with strings, creating a pitch that can mimic the tones of speech. The Brazilian cuica is one of my favorite friction membranophones because it sounds like this. It's a drum with a stick attached to the inside of the drum head, producing that distinctive sound when rubbed. What are you doing, Steph? Hey, guess what? We've reached the chordophone family. These instruments make a sound through the vibration of a string stretched between two points. Wikipedia told me that these were pitch percussion in one place and not in another, but they're cool and I want you to know about them. The Jathari is a traditional Indian stringed percussion instrument. It has a large resonator called a kundam, usually made from a log of jackwood. You play the four metal strings with two small wooden or bamboo sticks. And that's going to be a theme for all of these. We're going to be hitting things with tiny hammers. 
The traditional Brazilian barimbau is a single string percussion instrument played with a bow. And it reminds me of something. What? The next eight all fall under the classification of hammer dulcimers or zithers. They involve strings being struck with little baby hammers to make incredibly rich full compositions. We've got the hammer dulcimer itself out of Persia, the cimbali out of Ukraine, the salterio out of Italy, the kim from Cambodia, the yankin from China, the cimbalom out of Hungary, and the Danton Tapluk from Vietnam. I don't know what it is about the hammer dulcimer, but it's everywhere, and every country has put their little spin on it. Okay, so I was going to make a joke here about, like, you know, aliens seeding the idea of the hammer dulcimer everywhere, but the truth is, it's just because of trade routes. Like, it originated in the Persian area, and then through trade, made its way both into China and into Europe. So, yeah, it's certainly not that complicated, but it is still pretty wild how ubiquitous this thing is. Also, where the fuck are all the sober dulcimers? Why are all the dulcimers hammered? It really makes you think. As we begin to near the end of our list, we find the clavichord. This one surprised me a little because I didn't think this would be considered a percussion instrument. A harpsichord isn't a percussion instrument, but a harpsichord is plucked and a clavichord is struck. This was traditionally used as a practice instrument and composition aid because it wasn't loud enough for performances. In the same confusing not a harpsichord vein is the pantalon. This was considered a big dulcimer with a double sounding board and about 200 strings. It had no dampers, so the strings vibrated sympathetically, giving it a rich, resonating tone that was quite novel at the time and made a noticeable stir. The lack of dampers, however, made articulation difficult. This is the Indian onovilu. There's a rich tradition between the painting of these onovilu and the playing of these onovilu, but honestly, I'm exhausted from working on this script all day, and I don't really want to get into it. And with that, friends, we did it. We got through what hopefully is every single pitch percussion instrument out there. If there's one I've missed, or if you want to tell me your favorite, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget that these instruments all make really, really, really cool additions to modern electronic music. So don't be afraid to go find like a contact library or search through the presets of what you have in your doll right now and start throwing these over some, um, you know, beats in the genre that you like to produce in. Uh, they are a unique and melodic, cool way to uh, work with rhythm and melody at the same time. So <laughs> yeah, I hope that was interesting to you. I'd say this first episode of I Wish I Knew More About was a success. If you agree, give the video a thumbs up, maybe subscribe, maybe go to the Patreon Red Means Recording and give us some support there. I don't know. Well, you can do whatever you want to do. I think this was a success, but what do I know? I'm just a stupid slut. Until next time.